Hey everyone, and welcome to another virtual catch up uh, with our transfuser alumni. It's lovely to have you here. And I've lost weeks of how many weeks we're now on uh, on lockdown, now, but hey, here we are enjoying catching up with our transfuser alumni. Uh, today, I'm delighted to have uh, Katie Nelson from um, Blueprint um, Studios with us. Um, and she's currently making um, her game, Billy Bust Up. So I'm not going to talk too much to um, about Katie or what she's done or where she's been. I'm going to let her do all the talking um, and let her introduce herself and tell us a little bit about, yeah, just tell us a little bit about yourself, Katie, where you've got quite an interesting story at the moment. Yeah. Um, so, you know, maybe you want to talk a little bit about where you're finding yourself and where you find yourself today. Um, and also just, you know, tell us a little bit about how you got into maybe your game, games industry and, and you know, where it all kind of started from. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I guess I'll just start from the beginning of uh, yeah. my games journey. So I've always known I wanted to make games. Um, I think I just wanted something, like whenever I decided I wanted my job, I was thinking about it when I was like 11. And I was like, I want a job in something that I love. And I loved video games. So I also loved art as well. So. I always had that goal in mind. I feel like I was quite fortunate because some people go through life for a really long time not knowing what they want to do. And um, I went to college and I studied maths and further maths because I thought I really needed to get more into like the tech stuff. But I found it wasn't really meshing with me. So I ended up going to another college instead, which was a national diploma. So it was like a BTEC. And that was in games. So I did a national diploma in games media and then went to Bournemouth University where I studied games technology, which was a bachelor in science degree. And um, that was pretty good because it covered not only the aspects of like 3D art and programming, like it did quite a big broad syllabus of everything. So you could kind of get an idea of what you fit into because um, there's quite many different aspects to uh, games development as a whole. So there's so many different jobs you can sort of fit into and it can be kind of hard when you're first getting into games to decide where do you fit within that like do you want to do environment art or character art or programming um so it gave us a chance to sort of discover what we like the most and then additionally it had business studies so you learn how to run a business how to project manage yourself and these are all things i think people tend to overlook so they don't really think too much about how you're going to do taxes and stuff like that and uh how are you going to get money in? How do you pitch for things? How do you put together a pitch document? Um, how are you going to manage your project? Where, how are you going to manage the finances? Quite a few new developers will mismanage money because it's, it's quite a difficult thing to do. Um, and so I was quite fortunate that we had the business element attached as well. I know quite a few people who do games development later on, go on to do an additional year in just business. Um, and I had a placement year that I decided to do where we made around company, where we first founded our studio. And uh, we kind of messed everything up, but I thought that was quite a good thing because it was like a year to sort of get, get to grips with things whilst we had the university there as like a safety net. And I did a dissertation in horror. So I learned how to find a formula for fear because that was my dissertation topic. Wow. And so, um, <laughs> After university, I kind of thought I should keep going with that because I already had so much already on the subject and had started working on it for my dissertation, so it just sort of made sense. And we applied for Transfuser. So we, we got into Transfuser with, I think it was like the first year ever of Transfuser. And then later on, we did the Patch Development Fund, which was also the first year of that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we applied with our realistic horror game. Um, and it was a puzzle game and it was inspired a little bit by games like Monkey Island, which were my favorite games growing up because I really love puzzles. And a part of the reason why I was doing it was because I wanted to make, um, <laughs> I wanted to make money. Um, it, it was more like horror games seemed quite popular at the time. Yeah. And it seemed like a really good way to perhaps cater to people. Yeah. And uh, I thought that would be a popular genre to make. So I'm right. just sort of going into my mistakes. Uh, <laughs> <but earlier. laughs> Learn, learning opportunities rather than. <laughs> yeah. I'm not like saying this is a good thing. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I did Transfuser and we made our horror game and we got to present at EGX and um, we didn't manage to get the full funding. And what we did after that is we took the assets that we made whilst you're we on Transfuser, because obviously it's a bit of a blow to not go through with the full funding if you don't manage to succeed. And the best thing to do, I think, is to just sort of pick yourself back up and see what you can do and what you can learn from that. 
And we took our assets and we put them on the Unreal store so that we could continue staying in business and sell and make something out of it still. Um, and we kept working with Relapse and trying to push forward. And we decided to take a little break from it and started working on a complete opposite game, which is our colorful 3D platformer. So complete opposite from start, um, realistic horror game to stylized cute game about a goat. And that was because we just wanted to do a game jam. And it was a, okay. just a, like a two day break for a game jam. And it picked up more attention on social media than Relapse ever did. Okay. So it's kind of, you kind of have to pick up exactly where social media, like if you find your game isn't picking up traction after like pushing for it for so long, and then you start getting attention on another project, it's like, what are we going to do here? Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that I learned when I was saying before how I was originally catering to what I thought other people wanted with the horror game was that Billy Bust Up is more my style. Like growing up, I always drew adorable cute animals. I always loved 3D platformers. It was like my dream game. And mm. I sort of came to this realization that I was way happier working on Billy Bust Up. Like when I was working on Relapse, I was feeling quite depressed. It was a very depressing, moody game. And I wasn't doing it for myself. Right. And I think one of the most magical things about indie games are that they're a part of you. Like they're not mm. there to sell the most copies. They're not there to be the next Call of Duty. They're there to sort of be a reflection of yourself and not everyone's going to understand what you've made but they'll see your passion in it mm. and some people are going to see your your uh, project and relate to it and connect to it and it's going to mean a whole lot more to them and so my, my main lesson from this is to sort of stay true to yourself and make something you're happy making like you feel genuine joy when you're working on this project um and so we kept working on it and then we applied for the pitch development program later yeah. on and succeeded yeah. with that and got the full funding. Yeah. So, um, yeah, generally I feel like even if you don't succeed, you should just keep going, yeah. find ways to sort of learn from your lessons, see where you went wrong yeah. and uh, try and make the best of it really. So that's my, my big, uh, <laughs> <laughs> your big so epiphany. Far. I um, mean, I think, I think, yeah, I think that's, you know, one of the things that um, I notice around about certainly, you know, the games industry and, and, and probably kind of generally business as a whole is that the ability to have that resilience um, and the ability to be able to, um, you, you know, if, if things, you know, you, you may have a plan and, and an understanding or, or maybe thought, okay, this is, this is where we need to take this. Um, we, we've got this idea for a game or we've got this idea for this business or we've got a desire to do that you know and it starts from that kind of I think one of the things you said was that you had that kind of desire of wanting to make money you, you like making games you've got that kind of entrepreneurial kind of spirit with inside you um, and, and and it's kind of like okay so let's go let's let's take this risk let's do it let's go do you know the business the business program for the year and set up a business and so you've established that so it's great and then the opportunity for transfuser comes up so you kind of you, you've grabbed that as well um but then kind of things changed and and it's, it's you know some in some ways it's like having that kind of resilience and that kind of forward thinking as well in terms of not even forward maybe it's creative thinking to think oh actually let's you know let's try something new let's try something different and and noticing Oh, hold on we're getting we're getting the recognition here we're getting we're getting engagement with the community um and then and then beginning to to kind of ride that out so i mean i think that's some really kind of key things in terms of of of, of participating and certainly on something like transfuser if it's something if you know if, if if you know getting involved within the 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 games industry i think resilience is a massive massive thing because it doesn't normally always go to plan unfortunately and um you know and, and and whether it's whether it's plan in terms of scope scope of a game or whether it's you know delivery times or you know putting in a specific content or, or that kind of thing it's you know it, it can be a multitude of different things and that that ability to be able to bounce and to, to be able to change that so and to and to flow with that as well is um, is really important so so in terms of like if we were talking a bit about transfuser i mean how did you was you, you kind of mentioned about you know kind of having that entrepreneurial thing you kind of wanted to be in games you had quite a clear idea at an early age what you wanted to be in was it a, did you always want to kind of set up your own indie games studio or was it just because you were in that opportunity with your university course or was it kind of specifically actually I'm going to choose to do this because it ticks these, ticks these boxes? 
Um, so I was always massively inspired, specifically by Tim Schaefer, who runs Double Fine Studios in America. And so my dream was always to work for him specifically. Okay. Like that was my big dream. Uh, I remember contacting him when I was like 12 by email, like trying to get a job. And um, I still have my little book where it's like, um, what do you want to be when you grow up? Who, who inspires you? And I wrote Tim Schaefer. Um, and it was, it was always my big dream to just move to America, like move to San Francisco. And at university, we were given the opportunity to do the indie game studio. And I kind of felt like if I couldn't do that, then I would like to tell my own stories because mm. I feel there's a lot more creative freedom in being an indie dev studio. Um, and with Billy Bust Up in particular, it's kind of going to this point that I'm just so in love with my own game. I feel really fortunate to love my own game so much that I'm almost like the like one of the biggest fans of my own game. Yeah, <laughs> oh, no, it's awesome. <laughs> Sorry, I just sound like I'm, uh, yeah, it's not just because of me, it's everyone on the team contributing to it. It feels it feels very nice to feel it all come together and work together with the team mm. and to be able to have creative input on that and to okay. work together with each other. And it's yeah. just, it's a really nice feeling because it feels like we've made our own little child that we care and love and nurture and watching it grow basically. And I think so there's a lot more of a connection. Is it still the same team that worked on Relapse and your transfuser game or is it, how's your team evolved over, you know, over the last four mm. years? What's let's talk a little bit about your team and uh, so about half of the transfuser team are the original people so me and james um yeah. then we had some more people join for relapse but then they sort of transitioned into this so um our animator slash rigger was joining as a 3d prop artist but his main passion was animation which is great because we needed an animator yeah. uh, so he now rigs and animates all the billy stuff yeah. and then a lot of our current team actually came on as fans of Billy Bust Up. So they were just part of our community who were sort of getting involved and contributing. And uh, Ash, who was like sat over here next to me right now, uh, <laughs> they're, they're from America and uh -huh. they were making some fan designs for characters and they were so perfect. I had to bring them onto the team because I don't know, there's just something really nice about having a community that engages in such a way. Like I want people who love the project as much as I do. Yeah, so um, our team was mostly from the community people who were interested in the project and um, I don't know, it's just a lot nicer when you're working together and you're all really into the same project, I guess, and you kind of know when someone fits right in and it's more important that they get on with your team dynamic. Right. Um, so yeah, we I didn't mention this previously because you mentioned at the start, but we're in Sweden at the moment, so we, we won some scholarship to stay at a game developer house in Sweden. Oh. Uh, we're unfortunately stuck here now because <laughs> of uh, current <laughs> events, but it's a really nice place to be stuck in. Um, I, I don't know if I can pronounce it. It's in Swedish. It's like Spelkollektivet, which means the gaming collective. Cool. And it was my first chance to meet Ash as well. So they flew over from America and now we're Great. all living together, which Great. is nice because obviously um, working, we've been working remote a lot this time with all the people that are working on it. Okay. And so it was a chance to work in a similar office space. So... There's definitely a benefit I didn't realize because I've worked remote for so long with everybody, but there is a benefit to having a shared space where it's not really necessary. It's just, I don't know, it feels a bit more streamlined and a bit more uh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> more, more of an event. So, yeah. So, like, so talk a little bit about um, kind of your remote working kind of situation. What kind of, you know, how, how do you manage that? You know, in terms of, well, I suppose, okay, let's back up. What's, what's your role in terms of the team? Do you like manage the team or how, how did your team kind of gel and function together? You're obviously said that you're normally remote working, um, um, but you know, is, is there a particular person who kind of leads the team or is it all kind of, kind of all hands in together or, or what, how, how does that kind of, how does that function? How do you, and also things like, how do you communicate with one another? Have you got any tools you would recommend? That kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, we use Discord mostly, so uh, we all communicate through Discord. Um, I ended up somehow being sort of the leader, because um, <laughs> I kind of feel like, in a sense, everyone is contributing the equal amounts, and I just like implying that I'm like in charge, but at the same time, I'm very much, um, the way I run the project is um, artistic freedom. I don't know if that's like the best way to necessarily do it. Some people have a project and they're leading it and they know exactly what they need done and they give people like set jobs. 
with myself I guess because a lot of people joined the team from just contributing stuff like Ash with their concept art and like their ideas mm-hmm. I, I trust them to do the job that they're best at and I say you go ahead and you do what you think is the best option with like minimum guidance if they need more guidance I'll give it but I kind of right. prefer to let people contribute parts of what you know part of themselves to it yeah okay. um so I do kind of guide the project because you still need someone at the top sort of helping bring it all together so I feel like I'm the one helping it sort of all come together in the end yeah and sort of guiding it um but uh I guess I kind of lead the project yeah <laughs> um cool. yeah so we we kind of uh we use source control um it's a new one called Glue On, I think it is. Um, we, we recently just changed it, but we use a source control and we have, we talk every day and sort of discuss things and we say, oh, we upload a video and we say, this is the newest thing. What do you think? Do you think this is better? Uh, what changes would you suggest? And we have a lot of Google Docs, like uh, an entire Excel spreadsheet on animations and what speed they should be. And we sort of talk and discuss and tick things off there to sort of track everything. Right, okay. So cool. uh, yeah, that's kind of how we're managing it. That's cool. So to talk a little bit about Transfuser, how was your experience with Transfuser? How did you, you applied, um, you were at Bournemouth University. Now it's not, it wasn't, it's not a local hub. So how, tell us a little bit about, you know, how you manage your local hub, which hub you're a part of and how you kind of manage that whole process. And then just a little bit of your experience of, of Transfuser um, in 2016. So um, I think I joined, like we went straight after university. We mm-hmm. were like a year in. And I think that kind of helped me as well in the sense of realizing why Transfuser could be so good because university afterwards can be kind of, um, what's the word? You can feel a bit lost because right. you've kind of gone from this really guided like four years of having a lot of support and uh, set tasks like uh, assignments to do to suddenly having nothing. And right. you can feel a little bit like, where am I going now? So I felt like that for a bit until we discovered Transfuser and that kind of gave us back that transitional period into like discovering what we wanted to do and where we were going to be going. So we, we discovered it, I think, through social media and applied to a London hub because that was like our closest hub um, since we're from Winchester. And well, that's where we're living now, not from Bournemouth anymore. But um, then they emailed us back and said that we needed two more people because it was just me and James. So we managed to conduct a few interviews, find two more team members, and uh, they joined the team. And it was a little bit weird because our hub was so far away from our uh, house, it was like an hour away on the train. So we'd pop in and out, but we weren't there like consistently. We'd check up through the internet and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, But yeah, that was our general experience with it, was sort of Mm -hmm. working remotely with the two other people on our team and sort of getting to know them as well, since we weren't necessarily too closely knit um but yeah uh, that was my general experience with transfuser until egx which was definitely the massive highlight but i don't know if people are gonna be able to do that this year mm-hmm. uh sadly but um yeah yeah that was that's cool so how in terms of like kind of just was preparing you guys for for where you're at now and what you're doing um how, how do you think that impacted that impacted you you know if you hadn't had the opportunity to, to participate in transfuser do you think you would have still carried on you probably would have still carried on anyway but you know what, what was what was the impact of that in terms of where you're at now do you think you'd have carried on with your own indie indie dev business or do you think you'd have maybe gone into the, in, the industry or um, what do you think i don't think we'd be where we are now i don't think billy Dust that would be a thing like it helped us bring in money even though we didn't get to the final stage because we were able to use the product that we made previously the uh prototype that we'd made for transfuser and like split up the assets and sell them it gave us work as a portfolio to show off as well Mm. um but also we learned a lot throughout the whole experience so even though we didn't succeed there was an awful lot of lessons that were learned from that that helped Mm. us sort of progress and then eventually end up with the pitch development program so I assume what would have probably happened is either um, we might have ended up losing hope or moving on to bigger studios and dividing mm-hmm. up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think that we would be where we are today. And I'm almost a little bit happy that <laughs> we didn't succeed with Transfuser because I don't think I would have Billy Buss up because yeah. I, I just think there was a lot of lessons learned from that whole experience. Mm. Yeah, I think it's quite interesting because it's, um, 
you know, it's one of the, the things that, that, you know, teams actually being, you know, at the end of Transfuser, they, they, you know, they have this IP and they've, they've developed something that's there and it's like, what, you know, what do they do next with it? And some of the, you know, some, some teams, you know, they'll, they'll go off and go into industry or they're going to do different stuff or they're going to, to different avenues in terms of, of where it's, where it's gone. Uh, some of them really, it really helps them to um, just kind of figure out, well, I'm quite good at this role, but I'm not so good at that role. Um, or, um, maybe I should kind of focus on, you know, like you say, your portfolio and developing your portfolio. Um, and so, and, and so there's, you know, there's, 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 there's quite a number of different kind of elements that, that can come out of it in terms of like, for, I suppose, with us, and, you know, teams having kind of the IP when they come out of it and, you know, and having something, um, I've spoken to a couple of teams who, who weren't selected, but have gone on to continue on in business. And, and it's that kind of what you said, you know, there was lots of kind of lessons learned, but actually by, in some ways not getting the funding it was quite good because it helped mm -hmm. us to actually define what we we're going to be doing and it'd be quite interesting to see you know where things would have been if you carried on with relapse and, and what would happen mm -hmm. with, you know with that kind of ip and and where that would go on and um, i think it's really you know i think another really cool thing that you, you did was you took your ip and you sold it and you made money out of it you know and mm -hmm. and you helped to sustain yourselves mm -hmm. as you figured out what the next steps were going to be to do and um, so there's, you know, there's a couple of things in that one is kind of like the sustainability and sustaining yourself, you know, after whether whether you are successfully selected for funding or whether, you know, you, you continue on with your business and you, your IP. Have you got anything that you can say in terms of things that you've learned or things you've done? A um, couple of things, I suppose, that I kind of know of as one of this thing that you, you know, you've obviously sold some IP. Um, maybe it's things like... Um, how you know you, you talked a little bit about your community and how you've brought in talent through that community and um, you know how important is things like your community as well and, and helping to sustain uh, where you're at and where you've got to just now as well so just a couple of you know a couple of things around sustainability and, and keeping going yeah one thing i would definitely recommend is to get social media started for your game quite early on like with believe us that we had a dedicated page for it like straight away Whilst with Relapse, we had our company account. So we just had our like Blueprint Games company account. And I think it's a lot better to try and advertise and promote through a dedicated games page. So like, yeah. like get your game's name out there. You want to advertise the game's name, not your brand. Like people are less interested in your company brand. They want to know the game. They want to see more of it. And the community as a whole definitely directed us. Like I don't think Billy Buster would be where it was without its community because it's helped direct us so much. Like. Um, they give us feedback in each post. They analyze why did this post do well? Um, what aspects of it are people being drawn to? Mm -hmm. um, and yes, just in general, like it also just cheers you on. It's like nice to have that that sort of um, positive influence of people pushing you forward and cheering you on. So uh, yeah, I would recommend people getting social media pages made specifically for Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, Twitter's got a really good game dev vibe as well. Like there's loads of game developers out there that will help you. They've given me feedback on how to like optimize our process. And they said, oh, you could do this a lot better and more efficiently if you tried this. Um, mm -hmm. Unreal Engine as a whole, like we have, uh, we use Unreal Engine for our development and they have a really good community. Like Unreal Engine are very supportive and um, Epic Games in particular have reached out and helped us quite a bit. So I would say like, don't be afraid to reach out to people as well. Other developers get involved with the game developer community as a whole. Like a lot of my contract work has come from other game developers and sort of uh, just getting to know people. Like the UK games developer scene is a really supportive and lovely one. And I've made quite a few friends as a result. So um, I would just say sort of get out there, meet people and um, don't, don't be afraid to sort of mingle and try new things. <laughs> that's cool so um so kind of building your community up in terms of like social media getting your social media pages together um and and it being more I suppose about your product rather than the brand of who your business is um so that's that's really that's really key I mean in terms of like kind of assets for Billy Bust Up you know you, you said that you kind of sold some of the assets for your um for Relapse do, do you mm -hmm. do the same for Billy Bust Up or is that kind of different how does, how does that all work but, um, for Billy Buster, cool. we try and keep everything unique for now. Uh, yeah. I do put out the occasional tutorial to try and help direct people if they want to have similar results. Um, but we're trying to keep it so that we at least have something unique about our game. 
Mm-hmm. Um, there might be opportunities later to sort of hand things out for modding and stuff like that in the future, but not until yeah. the game's released. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, we use Patreon for Billy Best Up to bring money in. So we have sort of behind the scenes things. I'll do videos on how to replicate stuff um, and concept art, storyboards, and testing builds each month. Okay. So people can test the game and try it out. So that's how we're currently making money through Billy Best Up. Okay. What about you, you mentioned contracting? What is that? Is that outside of um, the Billy Bus Top stuff, or is that personally you, or is that as a whole team? Do you all do you all do some contracting? What, I that? usually do most of the contracting. Um, James has done a little bit of programming stuff, but usually I do character art. Okay. I, I started relapse as an environment artist, but with Billy Bus Top, I turned into a character artist. So. Okay. <laughs> I, I rarely do it, but if we need a bit more like support, like right now, then I can take on contract work. And uh, lucky enough, I've got enough contacts at that point that yeah. I can sort of reach out. But Twitter is definitely the best place to sort of find those sort of contacts and put out a post and retweet and see who's interested. Excellent. And so the other thing that I, that I think you mentioned earlier as well, that you got the Epic Mega Grant as well. So that's something, mm-hmm. you know, these are all things that, you know, when we get applications in and, you know, we speak to our teams, it's stuff that they kind of aspire to do, um, you know. So things like you know Kickstarters or Patreons or mm-hmm. um, you know kind of um, getting you know their game up on Steam and wishlisting it and all that kind of that kind of stuff. And um, you know even the community stuff. Um, I think one of the things that I observe with it, you know, we do get a lot of people saying, "Oh yeah, we're going to do Kickstarter or we're going to mm-hmm. do." Uh, you know, we're going to do a Discord, you know, set up a Discord community, but they're not, they haven't started it. Um, so I think part of my thing is get going with it now. One just put in a note, but can we talk a little bit about time for these things? Because obviously you do the art and there's others doing programming and you've got other people involved, but kind of social media and community building and Patreon all takes time. Um, so what, how do you, how do you, work that how do you work your time managing these things plus being able to kind of develop the product the product and and, and, and do that as well, hmm. well social media <laughs> takes up a surprising amount of time like i think yep. like half it's like half my job at the point but it's like pushing to bring money into the company as well so mm-hmm. i feel like if i didn't dedicate as much time as i did to building this community we wouldn't have found the like funding opportunities that we have had mm. yep. um like unreal engine was mostly impressed like whenever <laughs> whenever we speak it seems to be the community that has pushed it like the the feeling of feeling impressed by our follow account um mm. people we've spoken to with uh, particular funding opportunities i won't go too much into have once again said it's the community interaction that has pushed it yeah um especially since we're quite early i think still in development like we haven't got like the big shiny final trailer ready yet and yet we're already at a point of quite a decent interaction and following count. Like, I think it's more important the interactions than the amount of followers you have. Right. Like if you're getting good hits on your posts and people are engaging and they're making fan art and writing comments, that's a good step forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and my general advice as well to people who are developing games and making posts is to engage with your community. Don't just sort of leave them there, like let them know that you're listening to them. Um, our community in general has said that they really appreciate the fact that we take the time to talk to them and let them feel listened to. So if they have feedback, then we will discuss it with them and let mm. them know that we appreciate their opinion and stuff. So make sure you're engaging with your community because it will definitely encourage more people to get involved because people like to feel like they're a part of things. Yeah. And you can do community contests as well. Like that's how we got our first big start was a design your goat competition. So we had people <laughs> design their own goats and stuff like that. So uh, get them involved in some way. Yeah, that's cool. So where do you, where do you, I mean, is it you that manages that pretty much, Katie, or is it the whole team? Yeah. Or Yeah, okay. So where, where do you, I mean, do you, do you think one day, oh, let's just do a competition of somebody to see if they can design a goat? Does it just come yeah. like that, it, you know, or is it like kind of something that you you observe from other people or, you know, where, where do you get your creativity from? Um, sometimes it's just ideas that pop into your head. Sometimes you can get inspiration from other developers and what they've done. Try to not like completely copy their idea, but think of your own unique twist on those sort of things. Yep. Um, I think that particular idea came from an SGD so- uh, SGDC talk I saw where someone had like a booth at their expo where people could color in characters to sort of okay. make their own unique designs. Um, and then some of them liked them so much they put them in the game. So I thought, oh, we could have a contest where you can design your own goat and then we'll put it in the game. Um, but you also get full rights to your goat. Like it's not our goat. I don't want to take the designs. <laughs> it's like it's your goat. You keep your goat, but we'll put them in the game. 
Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. But it was really nice to see what people came up with. It was, it yeah. was really hard to pick winners too. Right. I okay. was really surprised with how, how much fun it was. For yeah. Everyone. So you okay. can do all sorts of contests, like design an outfit for your character or um, that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah. Just involve them in some way. That's cool. Excellent. Good. Well, we're kind of coming to a close with our kind of conversation and chat around about um, your journey and, and where you've been going and what's happened and how Transfuse has contributed to that and a little bit about where you are now. Can you tell us a little bit about what your plans are for the future? What's what's your thoughts? Where are, what, What's the next kind of, do you kind of, are you a planner when you think ahead? Obviously you talked a little bit about when you were younger, you obviously had a mm-hmm. plan for what you wanted to do. Are you still like that or? You know, uh, yeah, you think, yeah. <laughs> I already have plans for like the next two Billy Boss Up games in my head. Okay, like, I'm already cool. like pre planning that. Um, it's a little uncertain at the moment. Like, our plan was to potentially go for a Kickstarter. Um, yeah. that's why I've been spending so much time putting it into social media because you don't mm. want to go into a Kickstarter with no following because the mm-hmm. most important part is that initial like a lot of your backers are going to come from your community. Yeah. So, don't just rush into a Kickstarter unless you're sure you've got the amount of followers to help push it up there. Uh, But we're kind of going to put that on a slight pause because Mm -hmm. people don't really have a lot of money right now. Like a lot of people have come to us and said, please don't do the Kickstarter because we can't (laughs) make it and we really want to. So we've decided to delay it until people can sort of recover a bit from the Mm -hmm. current situation. Um, And uh, potentially continue looking for publishers. Um, It it depends what's the best situation for us, but... um, I think are also helping out in in that sort of sense with helping us look for funding and um I'm sure we'll do fine like in terms of getting the game done like no matter what this game is getting done yeah. <laughs> I can't I can't let it not get finished yeah do you have like do you have a date for kind of when you would like release or what's what's the kind of next what, what should we be looking out for in terms of when we'll be able to kind of get hands-on content or or see something well, you can definitely play the game now on Patreon. Our plan is to just keep updating the game. So okay. as each part of the game comes out, people can just continue to play it. Uh, so they don't have to wait too long to play. But I don't expect the game to be out until about 2022. Okay. 2023, depending on how much of a delay this whole pandemic is. Yeah. Um, so somewhere between those two years. But if it does need to be delayed for the sake of quality, I will. Um, yeah. Because it's mostly important to me like the, that the final result is good and that i'm proud of it but that's very hard because it's very hard to finish something and say yes i'm 100 <laughs> pleased with this um, so uh, that's great well we're totally can't wait it'll be great we'll we'll have all your links to kind of patreon and all your different links as well um on um and we'll make sure they're in, in the links so people can access them and get their hands on what's what's available just now we'll certainly be keeping our community and those who are involved with our uh, kind of Twitter feeds and all that kind of stuff, um, of, you know, up to date with where what happens with Billy Bust Up and, and where it goes. So, finally, on closing, uh, could you share one piece of wisdom um, uh, that you would like to impart to our transfuser teams? Um, I would just say have fun with it. This is like a once in your life opportunity. Don't don't get too stressed. If it doesn't work out, you can make it work. Just keep trying. I think a lot of people see success, uh, successful developers and don't see the string of failures behind them. Like <laughs> you're going to fail a couple of times, but you will succeed if you keep pushing. Um, and yeah, great. <laughs> have have a nice time with it. Yeah, great. Well, thanks so much for that, Katie, and really appreciate um, you joining us from Sweden. I hope you get home soon. Everything crossed <laughs> for you guys. And um, yeah, well, um, we're going to take a, a short break just now until we get the, the game set up and then we'll be back mm-hmm. in a couple of minutes to, to, to run through uh, your game and, and live stream it. Okay, okay. we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye, everyone. So I'm Bartek. I'm broadcast- broadcasting to you once again uh, from my cozy home. And today I got Katie, who was just interviewed uh, by Debra, and I'm going to be playing uh, her and her Steam game called Billy Bust Up. Uh, where did the, the where did the name come from, by the way? I'm curious. Oh gosh, uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm not 100. Um, percent It was a game jam game, so we kind of just came up with it on the fly because Billy Goat and bust stuff up. So it's it's just Billy bust stuff up. I think um, someone else came up with it. I haven't come up with like half the names for this game at this point, but it's catchy and people seem to like it. So. <laughs> 
It is catchy. I, I was wondering if it had some special rules, but I guess it just it just stayed because it sounded good. Yeah, and it's in, people like to abbreviate it to BBU, which I quite like. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about it as well actually, because uh, I was I was Short trying to I was trying to digest the the game title and see why you went mm -hmm. through that, and actually the, the abbreviation was something that I thought of as well. <laughs> so which mm. map should I jump into? Which one is the best one? Um, the Patreon so got... test map, maybe. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> you can do that one, then you won. Uh, so we've got two that I would recommend playing. Okay. So um, maybe start with the Oscar Petty map. It's not a serious gameplay thing. It's just something cute we made as a bonus thing. Um, but Oscar is your sidekick in the game. And, he looks dirty. Um, <laughs> yep, he's a cute little fox. So it's just sort of like Nintendogs sort of experience. So if you like, click on the bar off over there, you can pet him. Oh, and I see. Feed. And it's just sort of like um, an opportunity. So you need to get the shampoo in the corner. You see, oh no, you gotta do the shampoo first. <laughs> it went on his... I'm not sure what you call that exactly. His head is covered. But yeah, it's just sort of like <laughs> a, a cute little... Everyone loves Oscar, so it's like a opportunity to... Oh, you need to keep doing the... Uh, keep bubbling him up and then you can use the shower. Oh, but... I see. <laughs> it is like the <laughs> Nintendo Dogs indeed. Uh, I remember playing one of these uh, sort of games uh, when I was younger. It was very enjoyable. Look, now he's clean. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, this is like a little something we've... Oh, no. The shower, <laughs> the shower, <head> still <laughs> the shower is still... Okay, that was... I, I, maybe I, I pressed maybe the press left back mouse and button too hard and just kept going. <laughs> press, press back and see. Yeah, it's uh, fixed. It's fixed. I'm a bit behind on the stream. Um, but yeah, you can sort of pet him and stuff. Like this was part for like pet the dog as well, since we wanted to get some Twitter attention. Um, oh, I see. But also, people just want to pet Oscar, and people who love our game love the cuteness of it. And if you like hang it above his head, he he begs. Let's see. How patient is Oscar? <laughs> so Oscar, go a bit so, higher up. So Oscar is the name of the. It's a. It's oh. He does. So it's the name of the dog. What's the name of the goat? Uh, Billy. Oh, it is Billy. Oh, yeah, of course. Billy and Oscar. <laughs> it is Billy. But yeah, you can uh, give him head pets, chin pets. Um, was there any? He didn't like. It was there any thought behind the, like, why is it a dog? Why is it a dog and a goat? What's the story behind that? Um. So. So the goat was because the game jam theme was spring into action, and um, thought springy goat, like mm -hmm. that just made sense. Um, but then Oscar came about because we figured. I don't think this is necessarily good advice, but at the time I was thinking every three D platform needs a. So we made a wolf protagonist as well because I thought. Wolves, Sorry, I, I, I think you got cut off the. You said every oh, right. platformer needs, and I missed the most a important sidekick. part. A sidekick. Ah, of a course. sidekick. <laughs> yeah. A sidekick. Um, I don't know if you can play, by the way, but because the back button is breaking it, but you can also shake his paw and stuff like that. Um, yeah, the back button seems to have broken it. Oh, so I actually cannot go back. This is. <laughs> the Oscar yeah, does not let the player out until he's satisfied. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the, the pet thing demo is pretty much done. It was just a very small thing to put on social media because it was cute and I think it kind of gives a finalized look of what it, uh, the game might look like when polished. That's something that I find actually quite <laughs> interesting because you, you mentioned uh, during the, your chat with, with Debra that you put a lot of, at least I got that impression, a lot of focus into the community, which I think is great having mm -hmm. that. Uh, whenever a developer uh, has that great connection with the community of their game, I think that it helps to build up the game. It helps to build the game and direct it in the right direction, uh, because at the end yeah. of the day, you are making what players want, if you consider their feedback. Um, you just got to be ever so slightly that you don't waste too much time with it, which has been a problem before. I've like spent so long focusing on community content that it's like not necessarily the main focus. Uh, so you got to find that nice balance between the two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There were... Uh, so yeah, I do. Yeah, I've had outdated a... Expo Map. Uh, which map, sorry? Outdated Expo Map. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> That's the one from EGX. 
from EGX. Uh, so what year was it that you were at EGX? When was that? Um, oh gosh, it was from the pitch development program, but my brain has gone to mush on how long ago that was. Uh, <laughs> it was the first year of the pitch development program, so about a year and a half ago maybe? Oh, I see. Uh, because I feel like we, actually, <laughs> we actually streamed the EGX in 2019, which you can watch on mm -hmm. our YouTube by the way. Uh, that's UK Games Fund <laughs> on YouTube. It's a long so, video, um, but there was some great games there. Yeah, this is the one we made for um, the Pitch Development Fund in a couple of weeks. I see. Um, so we tried to sort of add some art to it. This isn't like a, a final level. It's sort of more like a sandbox with art. Um, and... I feel like I didn't finish my point about the fox either. <laughs> I was going back to why Oscar's a fox. Um, I just wanted to finish that point, but basically he's a fox because Billy's blue and he's orange and they're color complements of each other. I see. So I just wanted to finish that point because it was in my head still. Um, yeah, so this is the EGX build and we're going to see the new builds soon. Um, oh. But what we've been doing is trying to remake the game to be a bit more stable I see. and to remake Billy's model because it was my first character model mm -hmm. and it wasn't very good <laughs> so the other character models are a lot more up to date and polished whilst Billy was not um, alright so you're playing as Oscar at the moment so yeah our main character hook originally for the game because you've got to have a unique selling point was that you could play as two different characters mm -hmm. and um, they can collaborate. So you can have two player as well, and there's like unique. I, I was supposed to, to ask players. that, yeah. Um, but they can also work with each other. So, for example, are you playing with a keyboard or a controller? Uh, currently on a, on, a, on a keyboard. Okay. Um, hmm. Example, if you. Um, hold down his recall button for example when he's lost then you can get Oscar to return to you and oh yeah that's a old, very old bug <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the frustration with old old game demos is like oh I just I see all the old bugs that we used to have who's this um, person there is some sort of oh, a it's an otter. That's an otter. <laughs> yeah <laughs> with his physics being completely broken um, yeah so the idea was that the characters could collaborate with one uh, one another um, and so Oscar has his own unique skills that only he can do so if you I think people prefer Oscar but if you switch to Oscar you haven't used his most fun skill yet which is his digging ability and you use that oh by... that's that's great <laughs> yeah people absolutely love this this uh, gameplay mode and so you can use that not only to sort of get around that's an invisible wall I'm afraid uh, oh no, don't go in the water. <laughs> um, you can use it to get underneath um, areas that Billy can't get to. So you'll find some areas that are gated off and he can dig underneath them. It's also but a way to open money. the chests, which I, uh, which I thought I can yeah. only do with Billy. And, um, but additionally, they collaborate with each other. So you'll see that he's making leftover holes. And these are actually like teleports. So you can use them again when oh. he leaves the holes behind. I think it's E. Um, oh. Okay. I need to figure out where I am after all this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so Billy can use the holes as well. So you could dig a hole underneath as Oscar and then Billy could use the hole to get somewhere new. And then there's another mechanic. I don't fully know the keyboard keys i might need to just quickly bring up a guide actually I, I was gonna say the keyboard keys are somewhat intuitive because I, I i haven't seen any tutorial and when i uh, <laughs> when i was trying out the the game making sure it's running actually i was mm -hmm. able to figure out how to separate myself from the like separate the two characters mm -hmm. um, it was somewhat intuitive and yeah it's e for the teleport yeah there you go. That's a, I think that's a very creative mechanic. I really like that. It has a lot of uh, a lot of potential, especially for a platformer. It makes it a bit mm -hmm. less uh, uh, one-dimensional. You know, it gives you options of how you want to cross certain areas, which I think is which I think is yeah. great in platformers. Because oftentimes you uh, you find the games where it's like you have to jump over this and there is no other way, 
But if you got given options, you it sort of just flows. The gameplay flows. Um, and you I'm trying just... to find the other one because Billy has her own ones as well. But I'm trying to think which button it is. But she can open up her umbrella um, when she's standing, um, standing, not gliding. And then Oscar can use it as a bounce pad. Oh. Um, okay, that's R. So, so like a... As yeah, I said, yeah, this is one of our puzzles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. You found it. Well, that's great. That's actually great. That's awesome. So, yeah, we're trying to get the characters to work with each other and sort of complement each other's skill set. Um, Has the level nowadays... design been inspired by Sonic by any chance? I'm getting a Sonic oh, vibe no, from uh... this. <laughs> Sonic? No, do you, I haven't played a lot of Sonic. I'd say it's more like Spyro. I but, haven't uh... played any Spyro, actually. <laughs> <laughs> any Spyro. Um... Yeah, so uh, this was our original unique selling point, was the two-character gameplay, but recently it's changed to something I wasn't expecting when we first went into it, but it's now a musical 3D platform. So, musical um, 3D platform? How did that yeah, come to we... be? Was there was a musical <laughs> aspect? Do they randomly stop and sing? No. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's the boss fights at the moment, or at least one of the boss fights. We were trying to get it ready in time uh, for now, but... Uh, it was going to be three minutes of gameplay, not 30, and I thought it'd be over and done with very quickly. So, um, one of our characters is a theatrical puppet, and he makes you take part in his show. And so he has a musical finale, and his boss fight is him singing whilst attacking at the same time. And his attacks go and beat the music, and his lyrics give cues for the attacks. So um, there are moments where he's like, uh, mop the floors, you better keep it clean, and there's mops going back and forth. I Look see. out, my little friend, that shark is looking mean, and then a shark will spawn on the stage. And we were quite fortunate as well, because we managed to get the songwriter for My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Mm -hmm. So the people who, you know, bronies and the big obsession with My Little Pony mm -hmm. on the internet. Um, he's he's really well known for his amazing music for the show. Like even if you didn't like My Little Pony, you would absolutely adore his music. Mm -hmm. And it's very Disney esque. And so we've already got like um, one song done by him, and it's incredibly catchy. Um, so yeah, it's now kind of turned into this game that has singing boss fights essentially, or singing bosses with their own unique songs. So that's sort of our new unique catch. I see. But, yeah. I, I'm just uh, digesting what you said because it's it's very interesting. <laughs> I have recently actually, uh, within a university project, we worked on a, a beat the map game that had uh, like a concept of like music being implemented as well. Uh, we of mm -hmm. course didn't have enough time to implement uh, what we what we thought of, but um, yeah, I certainly uh, I understand. I, I exactly understand the the idea. Oh. Are you trying to glitch through the wall? I actually, I was just trying to jump and see what happens if I can get it through. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> you can reset the character if you go to the pause menu. Oh, if it okay. gets stuck. It's okay. Oh, you got free. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'll talk a little bit about the new map as well. So, what we've been doing since um, is once, because with 3D platformers in particular, you really want to make sure that the movement is good since. Um, like, if you can get the character feeling fun in an empty space, then when you start adding the rest of the game, it's, you, you know, you're guaranteed to have a lot of fun with the characters mm -hmm. and the plot and the story. Like, a character movement is the most important part. Um, but if you were to get into the actual block out for the levels and then change the character's jump, then nothing is going to sync up anymore. Um, like, so now we've changed Billy again. She doesn't work with the new character in this map. It just doesn't work. Her moveset doesn't fit with this map design. So you, you design um, the map to fit the character's moveset. I see. And so because we were also very new to this sort of game, we had a lot of mistakes in the code. As you can see, <laughs> there's a couple of bugs. Um, okay. It wasn't optimized. Our systems weren't optimized. Like we spent a very long time trying to get things so that it would be easier later on to build the game. So, like the eye system took a really long time to figure out because it translates information from Maya so that we don't have to code the eyes. Mm -hmm. um, so, the eyes, the 2D eyes, are using bones. And it's, it's hard to explain fully, um, but. Maya animations translate perfectly into Unreal so that the eye animations that are animated 
puts in, there's no need to hard code it all. I see. Like the texture changes. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the platforms in this level we used making Houdini, so we just had to make a spline and they would build the platforms and unwrap it for us. So um, this is mostly just a chance to experiment with our tools and find ways for when we actually go into full development to make it a lot easier. Oh, you found the recall button. Cool. <laughs> As I said, it's, it's very intuitive, actually. It's surprisingly intuitive. I thought, yeah. I'll just hold it and he'll come back. And he did. <laughs> nice. Oh, he this can use it as well. Oscar can use the, the drag mm -hmm. up holes as well. That's pretty cool. So with Billy, um, we decided to remake her because the character model also no longer reflected our concepts for her. So um, when you get to play the new version, it's only Billy, but her model has recently been completely remade. Mm -hmm. Um, to look a lot better. Yeah, guys, we're gonna play uh, the new version just towards the the end of the of our gameplay. Uh, part and of the, the animations have been remade. The rig's been remade to be a lot easier as well, because um, our rigger and animator was fairly new to rigging and animations. So he's like improved his rig, so it makes it a lot easier for us when we go forward making new animations. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, and the mechanics are a lot more intuitive. Um, so hopefully when you play the new Billy, you'll be able to feel a difference, mm -hmm. I hope. <laughs> we shall so this see. is sort of a chance to <laughs> play the old version. But unfortunately Oscar isn't in that version, so... Um, no Oscar, Oscar's still in development. We yeah, he's to... he's going to be re-added soon. <laughs> um, and just sort of give us a chance to play out some new mechanics as well with the new Billy. But uh, she's slowly being finished off she's going through her polishing phase since these animations were never fully polished off um we never really finished it we got to that point where we were ready to polish mm -hmm. who's the community favorite it must be oscar right um i used to think that <laughs> i i would do a lot of marketing directed towards oscar because i thought the people preferred oscar overall mm -hmm. um but when i've done polls it seems to be about 50 50. i see I think it's because um, Billy brings a lot of personality uh, yeah, from yeah. character design. I guess design. it depends if you're a goat person or a fox person. <laughs> <laughs> there are other characters as well that seem to get a lot of love, like a lot of our boss characters get a lot of love. Um, because we've got cat pirates. This is what the level is for, is our cat pirates. Cat enemies. pirates? Yeah. <laughs> They don't seem to be in the map for some reason. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. I'm not sure what build this was, but you could they beat might up be cat hidden. pirates in the They map. might be hidden. They are pirates after all, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you can see one of their cannons over there shooting stuff. Yeah, the cannon particles uh, are quite nice. Yeah, Looks I love our cool. particle effect artist. Oh, almost made it. <laughs> <laughs> How did the umbrella come to be, or was it just the first thing that came to mind when you thought of slowing, when you when you thought of having that glide in mechanic? Yeah, game? I thought that most well, when like I said with Oscar as well, I was doing like research on a lot of platformers I liked, and it seemed like you either had an option for some form of glide or an option for a sidekick. So I was trying to think of a way to <laughs> the physics is so broken on the other. Yeah, alter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, all authors are a little drunk, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, they've got physical animation on them. Um, yeah, so I was trying to think of a way to make a goat glide. And originally, I think people wanted me to make the ears flap or something, but I thought it was a little bit too cartoony for the game tone we're trying to go for. I see. Um, so I just thought, I thought I was being clever, but I was, <laughs> I was like, an umbrella. That could be good. It's like Mary Poppins. So, um... I'm not sure. I think the rainbow aspect was originally because Billy was supposed to be able to control the elements. So like oh. each color was a different element, but we kind of went away from that and made it just magic in general because constricting yourself to elemental magic was a little unnecessary. Um, I feel like that would have added a lot of uh, uh, complexity to the game. Mm -hmm. Like it would make it quite complex. So what's the goal of the level here? Um, or was just to sort of explore, just like explore, a sandbox, see, really. Because it was 3GX and we didn't really have a bunch of time to sort of dedicate into making like a story or anything. But um, the actual game is very story driven. Um, so we've got like cutscenes and mm -hmm. stuff. But um, the, the actual levels will be a lot more guided through 
solid missions and not just throwing you into a map like this. Will you have a... Can you give viewers a sneak peek of the origin of these two characters? Or is that still in the... Or is that still what, being like worked Like how out? they met? How they met, oh. how they became what they are and... What was the um, goal, goal together? <laughs> Uh, so Billy, well, okay, so some people get a little bit confused sometimes, but um, it's a little bit like Mickey and Pluto in the sense that Oscar can't speak, he's just sort of like her pet companion, mm -hmm. um, while she can, and he's sort of like the dopey fox character, he's just very lovable, he's there to sort of deport Billy and sort of be like man's best friend kind of role, um, and she met him as a little baby because his house caved in. And I his see. parents died, so she adopted him. And he's a couple of months old, so he's not supposed to be that old yet. I think he's about three months old. Um, Some serious hmm. uh, uh, lore going on there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just it's very mean. I, I I intend to make people cry at some point. Like, I feel like my story has succeeded if I've made people cry. I'm pretty mean to my characters. I think I found the boss room. The boss room. <laughs> it's just a random room. That's a very annoying puzzle there. I see big door, I think boss room. <laughs> mm. It's a very boring room, don't get too excited. <laughs> there used to be a cat pirate in there. When, if, well, if we think about it, every boss room is a boring room without the boss, because mm. there is just a lot of space and not much else. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, puzzles. Mm-hmm. How does one do this? Some people get it instantly, some people take a while on it. But you gotta like, light them all up. You might need to jump again if it doesn't register it. I feel like you might be one of the few- oh. <laughs> I feel like it depends on what games you've played as well, though, because oh. I've seen other games with this in. Oh, you figured it out. Okay. Yeah, you're one of the people <laughs> who gets it straight away. I'm, I'm, I was improvising. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is very interesting. It's the years of gaming experience where you do something, you are not sure why, but it just feels like it's the right thing to do and it ends up working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which I think it makes for the... It proves the design being good, you know. Right, would you ever have a mechanic within the game where you can shoot Billy or Oscar out of the cannon? Oh yeah, I want to add that. So many people have tried to get inside those cannons as Oscar, <laughs> so... <laughs> I think there's a plan for it. There is a plan, sounds good. I'm pretty it's sure there was a... I, I'm pretty sure there was a boss here. I, 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 missed the, I missed the spawn. Someone else got him. <laughs> <laughs> there was a cat pirate in there at one point. Why? Why did you go with cats for the pirates? Because um, I, I saw I quite like the idea because I think cats tend to be sometimes quite uh, feisty. Let's say <laughs> they might their, their own people, business. <laughs> I think people thought that I was being kind of like funny with the sense of oh, cats hate water. Why would they be cat pirates? But it's really um, a lot more simple. It's uh, when I was about five. I really liked pirates and I really liked cats, so I'd just dress up as one. Oh. <laughs> and I would just I would just I be see. a cat pirate. So I've got lots of photos of me dressed up as a cat pirate and I thought part of me wanted to put a bit of my childhood creation into the game mm -hmm. just to sort of make young me happy. Um I don't know, it was just sort of a nice thought to think that something I made so long ago could get into the game in some form. I and see. people seem to really like the idea because people love cats, so <laughs> I'm more of a dog person, personally, but... Oh, no. <laughs> That's why I was saying I don't mind them being the pirates. <laughs> mm -hmm. Some people do complain and say that they wish they weren't cats because they're so cute that they're worried about uh, them. <laughs> I see. They I are think, very overly adorable. <laughs> I think uh, with this uh, extremely exciting uh, scene on the screen, we can maybe move on to the newer build. <laughs> And you can mm -hmm. tell us a bit about what changed, why it changed, yep. and why you think it was the right thing to do. And mm -hmm. sort of uh, the whole story behind that. All the ins and outs. I guess outs. in... Yeah. 
get right into it, I guess. So, this is just sort of like a Patreon testing map. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a room with just everywhere to test the mechanics. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the biggest change you'll see is with the character mesh. So, it's been completely remade. Um, since Ash joined the team, they started drawing Billy in storyboards and in concept art in a different sort of way that like they thickened up the ankles of Billy, changed the body shape, mm -hmm. and kind of made it a little bit more like Wind Week style, I guess. And people really like to connect, like they connected more, the community especially connected more with that version of Billy, like a redesign essentially. I see. And one person said to me, I love all the characters, but Billy's model I do not like. Like I can't, I can't connect to her. Um, mm. And the reason is, is I was a th I was a three D artist for Environment when I was making the horror game, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I was only doing environments. I'd never really done character art before, so I was the only person who could do the character art, and I did Billy as my first proper model, mm -hmm. and didn't do a very good job of it. Basically, it takes practice, um, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. So I, I, think... I mean, sorry, go on. No, there's nothing important. <laughs> I'll say it in a minute. Uh, no, I was just gonna say that uh, I feel like certainly it's easier to get attached to characters that are much more stylized. Um, mm -hmm. If something is generic looking, it will someone will have a generic impression of it. But uh, if there is something odd about the character that people haven't seen before, they will recognize mm -hmm. it for that uh, key characteristic. You know. So which mm -hmm. map should I go with? Uh, I'd go with new Billy test map for new now, Billy and I'll show you the asset preview. Ooh, yeah. here we go. So, this is the new Billy. Um, yep, so you'll see that one, I've made her ears a lot longer. I, I was um, about to say, Because that was yeah. one of the... Yeah, people were, like kept zoning in on the ears. Like They seem to be part of her identifiable silhouette. She's a goat with long ears. And um, I think part of her recognizability on social media is help. Um, so, so I just decided to make them bigger mm -hmm. because people really love them. Um, you'll see that her legs are a lot and she's a bit shorter as well. Uh, her face now has her cheek fluff attached. So one of the things we did originally to sort of save on time was that we had all the elements of the character as separate meshes and they were connected via sockets so that if we had other goats in the game, we could easily flip out the ears, the horns the, to kind of create other goat models very quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, but now that the game has done a lot better and it's grown, we've decided that we can have the main character mesh as one whole mesh, so you mm -hmm. don't have those sort of intersecting face faces on the character, because you could see where the meshes were colliding with the other character mesh, like they weren't part of one whole unified mesh. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, she generally looks a lot cuter, I think. Uh, yeah, I you, hope so anyway. <laughs> you mentioned a lot of, like, uh, you made the ears longer, made the character a bit shorter, mm -hmm. and... Uh, more uh, somewhat like bulky in certain areas so that's pretty mm -hmm. much like yeah that's like stylizing the character uh, sort of focusing yeah. on those characteristics that made it made the character tick you know which i think is great i managed to flip the one of the ears to land yeah. on, the, <laughs> on billy's head i, like I think it's it great that. i think that's great <laughs> makes me think of those dogs when dogs get their real yeah pretty much um, also, additionally, what was good about doing this change, it's more like obvious when you do them side by side. One of the things we really wanted to do was make sure, because people really like Billy. So even though some people who were new were like, Billy isn't as good as the current models you uh, That's one of the bosses over there, actually. That's our theatrical puppet. <laughs> He's doing an animation over there. Oh, don't fall off. Um... He's pretty much finished. Can I fight him? <laughs> Oh, I had to test the falling animation. <laughs> oh no, you might just fall forever. I don't know if there's a kill volume. I think I will. Yeah, I think you uh, can yeah. use pause though to reset the character probably. Or hope so. There's also level, se um, level select music if you want to put music on. Like... Oh, there is music. Um, music. Title music. Oh, okay. Here I go adjusting the audio again. Any headphones <laughs> users, I'm so sorry. One second. If you want something that's more chill, uh, um, the pirate music is quite... Or Chicken Kitchen. But chicken, I like Chicken like Kitchen. 
That's for our chicken chef character. Okay, let's go with uh, chicken kitchen. Um. Uh, yeah, let me. Uh, I wanted to really compliment the the focus that's being put on on the base. Uh, on like very base mechanics of the game, such as uh, the, the 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 hovering, the Oscar's abilities, uh, Billy's abilities, uh, the simple animations as well, which are like pretty much uh, one would think just like the start of development. But I think it's extremely mm -hmm. important to get those things right because when you think about it, the player when they are playing a platformer game, what they are gonna see and use and experience the whole time is those very base mechanics, just in a different set of environments, uh, which might uh, complement the gameplay. But in the end, it's very important to nail these very simple things. So I think the fact that you are focusing on them is great. From player's perspective, it's awesome. And Billy has a new mechanic in this build that you can do called the Goat Bounce, oh. which is really, really fun. Um, I'm trying to think what button that is on... It might be the Roll button or Shift. If you oh yeah, it is it it's down, the, it's the Shift. I, I discovered that. I was a bit confused by that. <laughs> yeah, it's like a version of a Sprint, because, you know, Goat Bounce. Ah, I so see. it gives you a little bit of extra. Would Billy um, ever have a, an ability to climb on almost vertical walls? Because it's a Goat. <laughs> She can do the wall jump for now. Uh, ah, that is very true. I, I, show, I showcased it uh, just as the level started. I'll do it again, so... And she can climb that pole, and she can... One of the few, I think, things that you don't see a lot in a 3D platformer is that she can grab a ledge, but also shuffle around it um, to sort of reposition herself. So if she's got a ledge grab, you can also move around the... And move around. Here we go. Let's showcase it. There we go. I don't know why you don't see that as much in uh, 3D pop. It's usually just the ledge grab up. I think what would be quite enjoyable is if there was like uh, a, a platforming that the player has to cross where they press shift and the jumping just fits perfectly with how the tiles are positioned. <laughs> I think. I think you can also do a thing called a if you go to the pole. Sorry, you cut you off the Katie. Oh, sorry. Uh, if you go to the in the uh, uh, behind you, I think there's like a gray pole sticking. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. Billy went from a goat to um, Assassin's Creed. <laughs> 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 yeah, I think someone said that before. It's just like an Assassin's Creed. <laughs> but yeah, um, we're still like tweaking her a bit now. This isn't like our most most recent build, but um, we've basically started polishing animations now mm -hmm. uh, and finalizing things. I see. One of the good things as well about changing the character model because I wasn't sure if I wanted to do it. Like I did the model for fun to see if I could make it look better and. I didn't want to say to our poor rigger and animator, hey, do you want to just do everything again? Because, like, remaking all the animations again is a lot. Because there's like 150 animations or something. Yeah. And so I showed it to him, and he was really eager because he really wanted to have a new rig. Additionally, I think for the same reason as me, is to improve on something that you were originally quite new at. Uh, um, and also because the character silhouette is so different, like the shapes of the character silhouette is a lot easier to animate. Mm -hmm. um, the body shape of Billy before was so weird; it w was very hard to get the deforms to look right. Uh, um, now she's got much more simpler legs, like especially from the side on. Um, her legs are just a lot more consistent, I guess, mm -hmm. in terms of thickness. Yeah, the focus went um, into yeah. ears. She's almost like a helicopter when she's spinning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we added to the um, bounce pad as well. Like she spins now on bounce pads. Oh, we can it test that, that as nice well. We can showcase that as well. Yeah, that's. Uh... And you can sort of ground pound on it to get extra height and stuff. I oh, yeah, I forgot to actually show that when when the player jumps and they press the at least for me on keyboard this left mouse button. There is this sort of like a ground uh, slump. There's additional extra changes as well, like small things you wouldn't even really th think to add before. But um, so now as well, I assume it's in this build, 
Billy's landing animation will depend on the height she is. And if you fall from really high up, she like. Uh, so that if you jump very very small height, it's a very small pronounced landing. Now, if you jump from like above there, then it's sort of bouncy and squishes a lot with a lot of. I see. I also noticed uh, when I fell from the level before. Um, there is an animation almost like Billy is uh, uh, flailing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's when she goes into the splat. If she's flailing by the time she's falling, she'll splat into the floor and sort of have to get back up again. I see. I think you can manage it if you get high enough and then double jump. She'll do it in this map. Ooh. Um, and we also changed the way the jumping works as well. Like before it would go between. So like peak, it would change the animation to a peak animation and coming down, it would change to a separate animation. But now it uses um, blending in Unreal. So it's depending on your velocity instead, the animation. And it, it sort of gives a more smoother, really subtle, but when you see it in game and you know it's there, it's like, that's what we're basically trying to do now is to add these really smooth that bring it into a more pop. Sorry, you're, uh, you're sometimes cutting off, Katie. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I don't think um, it's on your part. I think it's uh, maybe on my on, on my side, but um, I'm not sure. But uh, just letting you know. <laughs> I'll just I'll repeat that bit again. Um, just what we're trying to do is to make a more polished experience overall by adding really, really subtle and small. Um, so just sort of polishing it all up. Mm -hmm. And we've definitely had feedback from Patreons now because our patrons are able to test monthly that they feel that she feels a lot more like an actual 3D platforming character, like a more packaged mm -hmm. final build rather than before. She always felt a little bit like a prototype. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like she's definitely heading in the right direction. I, I would certainly um, so. Comment Goat in the chat said, the movement is looking so slick. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really good name. Good name. Uh, Comet Goat is actually... Um... If I uh, sorry, uh, my my name's memory is not uh, the greatest, but I believe it's Bradley, uh, who we've been chatting to quite recently, and I was playing mm -hmm. a game from his studio. It's Steve. Oh, I'm getting people confused. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's Steve. Uh, anyways, we've been recently covering the the their game as well on stream. <laughs> and then the um, other map that it, when you eventually go in that one is our um, we made like a museum for patrons so this is when I was saying about making content for your community rather than making what the game needs mm -hmm. essentially um, when it comes to patron updates there are sometimes you've been doing a lot of back towards something but there's no real final thing to show off yet mm -hmm. um, so that month we were in the middle of doing something and we were getting close to completion but there wasn't anything done enough in a month to give them anything really worthwhile so I put together like a little museum area essentially where you could view the character in a sort of I don't know showcase arena yeah not sure what else to say I, I really enjoyed the <laughs> gameplay I really enjoyed the gameplay I appreciate playing games in Unreal Engine because it's engine of my preference mm. as well so same <laughs> <laughs> Woo, Unreal it's because of the blueprints my visual person. Yeah, we we basically use almost blueprints for everything. Like the whole game is using almost. All uh, actually, I actually never asked that. So, would you be looking to actually keep developing in blueprints, or would you ever uh, try to switch to C plus plus for more freedom, I think perhaps? We do have C plus plus in the game because we use it a lot for the co op stuff. Mm -hmm. um, since there needs to be special code for like split screen stuff and mm -hmm. being able to hop in and hop out. Uh, so some things do need C++, but in general, I would say we prefer Blueprints because it just develops a lot quicker, and we haven't had any issues with it so far. Like, it's it's fairly easy to use, It it's quick. Um, I don't think we're ever going to move on to C++ anyway. I see. Uh, C++ definitely has... Um, it's good to know both, I guess, so mm -hmm. that you can customize your own Blueprints and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. but, um, okay, yeah. chat, do you have any questions? We're going to be finishing up this session of the virtual catch-up slash uh, gameplay. <laughs> it was great. I really enjoyed the game. Thank you. 
it, there, there, yeah. there were actually very, very subtle changes, I think, to the character. Uh, mm -hmm. Because when I launched the game the first time, prior to the stream to test it, it was very hard mm -hmm. for me to notice what changed in between them. Um, yeah. But with that in mind, it felt better to run around at the same time. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. subtle changes definitely work and take the character to... Uh, they elevate the character, you know, to more stylized mm -hmm. and recognizable uh, hero. I guess it's sort of taking it from like that prototype to slowly bringing it to completion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's just those small subtle changes kind of add a bit. Like it's not a whole bunch, but it's enough that if you played a whole game like that, it might be get really annoying. <laughs> So the small changes should hopefully make the whole experience a lot more um, streamlined, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think chat is just uh, lurking around. Uh, so we mm -hmm. are going to be ending up here. Uh, you can go ahead and shout out your social media. This is the chance to okay. let people know about I... any... Where can people find well, you? <laughs> We're Billy Bust Up on anything. Like if you Google us, you'll find us um, on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon. Instagram, um, Discord. We've got a custom link as well. So if you do invite slash Billy Bust Up, you can join our Discord. I'll make sure um, that all of these appear magically on the screen. <laughs> and <laughs> um, and our Discord is extremely wonderful community. So I would recommend joining because everyone is absolutely lovely there, and it's a good time to sort of uh, just sort of discuss things with me. Any feedback you want mm -hmm. directly. We're very active there, and we like talking with our community, so I would recommend That, that must be very healthy for game <laughs> development. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, and on that positive note, uh, I'll be saying goodbye to Katie and to Stream. Thank you, everyone who was watching. Uh, it's always great to have some amazing audience staying with us. And then up until next time, if you want to hear about more about upcoming shows, etc., you can follow us, us on Twitter. And if you missed the stream or if you want to share the stream with anyone, uh, it will be up on YouTube within a week's time, I believe. We got great job, Katie and team from Debsif. There you go. Some kudos to Katie. <laughs> right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much and take care. Bye bye.